It's the only wrestling podcast on earth with Petey Williams, the two-time X Division champion. How's she going, eh? Lars Fredrickson from Rancid. What's going on, Lars? What's up? How's it going, everybody going? And let me tell you guys, I'm excited about tonight. This is one of these guys that I became aware of during his days in the NWA. I became a quick fan of his. I love the videos he's done. Guys, Zicky. No, no, no. You know what? That was a terrible introduction. Mm. Let's restart. I am the hottest free agent in all of entertainment right now. I am running Twitch. I am running professional wrestling. I am running. Who knows? I might get a call and do Saturday Night Live this Saturday. I don't know. So let's let's say say with a little bit more respect. Give me a outlandish Zicky Dice. Can, can I do it? Can I can I give yes. a shot? Yes, please, ladies and gentlemen. Our guest on the podcast right now. He is the former. NWA TV champion. He's sitting down at like the, the best set I've ever seen in my life. We have the outlandish Zicky Dice. Give it up. Oh. There it is. There it is. There it is. That's great. Now that's an introduction. I've got a lot on my chest. My doctor warned me before doing this podcast with you, with you boys. My blood pressure gets high quickly. So let's, uh, let's try and take it easy tonight. All right. Okay. All good. right. Well, Lars permission to treat him like a hostile witness. Mm. Well, yeah, absolutely. All right. I mean, we, goes we, without saying. We want to know about this video you dropped on Monday oh. because that, I mean, right out the bat, let me hit you hard. It is one of the best videos I've seen a independent streamer put out. It, the tease is phenomenal. Now, I know you probably won't tell us on the show what's going on, but. No, I, no, of course. That. You know, the Catholic Church wanted to make me a saint because I do not tell lies. So I'm going to be honest right here in front of everybody. Well, I see the speculation. I didn't expect the video to blow up like it did, but outlandish. You know, I'm going through this maze and this maze is my current situation right now. I feel stuck. I've been a free agent since January 1st. I've got over 2 million views on Twitch. I, I know I'm entertaining. I know nobody on the indie circuit is doing the things that outlandish Zicky Dice is doing. So if they're not going to give me what I want, it looks like I have to go and take it. So that means the time is the, the clock is officially ticking. Time is running out. I'm getting fed up. And it's only going to get worse from here because there's going to come a point in time, gentlemen, when you can't ignore money. You can't ignore money. Ooh. And if you don't want me, tell me what it is. Because in 48 hours, I'll turn around and release something bigger than the last. Try me. Try me. All right, and I'll, I love the I'll, speculation I'll that's been going around. Over 50,000 views on Twitter for a video. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and break it down to you. Let's break the fourth wall. I filmed that in my garage, gentlemen, with zero dollars. Zero dollar budget. Imagine. Let's put our brains together. Imagine what would happen if a company or someone believed in Outlandish Zicky Dice as much as Outlandish Zicky Dice believes in Outlandish Zicky Dice. So who's the... the uh, I'll bring one to you just because you mentioned something very interesting to me. You said if they 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 won't give it to me, I'll just take it. So who is they? Who 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 are we going after here? You know, let's just go ahead and be completely honest. AEW, all elite wrestling. With everything I'm doing on the side with the creativeness, I don't want to have to give that up. It's hard for me to fall asleep at night. My mind, you ever been to Disneyland? Great time, right? You got a churro, had a good time. You rode Space Mountain. That's my brain with ideas constantly. Now, I, I have to be able to control some of those, right? You, that's interesting you say that because we've had guests on here that have talked about going up north and going to this promotion, going to that promotion. Mm -hmm. And part of the reasons why they don't want to go to those promotions is giving up that freedom of creative where, I don't know, maybe you go back 10 years ago and the whole thinking was, it doesn't matter that up north is the top goal. So when did the swing in cre creative being number one happen, at least in, in your mind, in the pro wrestling industry? You know, to be honest with you, there was a point in time um, I wrestled uh... – DJ Z, uh, Joaquin Wild, um, and there was a point in time me and him had a conversation that night, and there was a point in time where I was going to throw in the towel. I was going to say, you know what, I'm done. And then I decided to stop giving a rat's ass about what everyone thought about me and the way I was doing things traditionally, and I decided to have a little bit more fun and made things a little bit more outlandish. So I decided to turn up a little bit. 
that led me to the NWA when the when the World uh, Television Championship pandemic boom I didn't even get a fair title run I didn't even get to walk out to a live crowd with my championship and I busted my ass to get to that stage I busted my ass to get to that that point but let me say this with everything that went on with the NWA I'm very grateful for the opportunities I was given and, and I had a great time and I was very proud to be the television champion and ask yourself this what happened to everyone else that held that title before me what happened after that mega stardom so what's going to happen to outlandish Zicky Dice? History repeats itself time and time again, and I'm bound for mega stardom. Whether they, they, Tony Khan, Cody, the EVPs want to ignore me time and time again. I know they see the tags, and it's making me sick. I don't know. All I know is I'm this close. I'm one promo away from taking over. You asked me when did this creativeness come to, come to fruition? That was in the beginning of the pandemic when Twitch reached out to me and they said, Hey, why don't you bring Outlandish Ziggy Dice to Twitch? And I said, I don't play video games. And they said, perfect. How creative can you get? And here we are. And Twitch has led me to some pretty big opportunities. I hosted a game show, Hive Mind, over 2 million live viewers. I've got a weekly front page stream on Twitch. Um, it's helped me co connect with um, other, other performers in, in the business, um, magicians, comedians, you name it. And it's all from this silly purple platform. And I got I to gotta thank Twitch. Um, and shout out to my partner Scooch, but we put in the time in this in this makeshift studio I, I got in my garage. My poor wife's in there doing taxes, and I'm in here smashing eggs and shaving eyebrows for a buck. <laughs> you know, wow, dude, this is phenomenal. I I have been excited about this all week long. Let's talk a little bit about the persona of Ziggy Dice. How did this start? What was the the cornerstone of building aye. Ziggy Dice in the look, in the attitude. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wish I could bring up like one of those old photos right now for everyone to see right now. It didn't always look like this. It was rough at times. I graduated from the third class of Black and Brave Wrestling Academy under Merrick Brave and Seth Rollins. Um, and back then, I was a lot chunkier. I had a big, uh, big beard and brown hair. It was combed back, and I came out with like a singlet on under. I always had the name Ziggy Dice, and there was this is one of my favorite stories from training. I had the name going in. Um, I was like, you know, that's that's what I want. We had a uh, one of the trainers and coaches, Crotch with the K, uh, when we were talking about names that night. He's like, "What's your name gonna be?" I was like, "Well, Zicky Dice." He's like, "I don't like it." And I said, "With all due respect, sir, your name's Crotch with the K." And he's all, "Touche. You can keep the name." <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what are you gonna? What, how are you gonna tell me something about names? You know? And uh, <laughs> um, so that was that, and. I came out looking like this pit boss. And then uh, I started going around. Uh, I, I did a lot of traveling right off the bat. You know, I played in a touring band before all of this. And, you know, uh, we did Warp Tour. We opened up for some dope ass bands. So I, I was I was no stranger to the road and, and the connections. Like, so I had merchandise connections right off the bat, right? Good designers. So I, I brought that into the game. I started traveling. And what I noticed in the travel, I said, you know what? I, I look like a lot of these other mother suckers in this locker room. You know, the beard with the little man bun. And, you know, I got the tattoos. People used to say I troll Brody, but I looked like Brody King's little brother for a, a long time. And I still troll him with that, you know? Um, so I, I said, what can I do to be different? And I took a lot of things that I like. It's not just wrestling, okay? My favorite style of wrestling is late 80s, early 90s, right? You got Mr. Perfect, Ravishing Rick Rude, Rick the Model Martel. Uh, that's a lot of the wrestling side and the style of wrestling I like, okay? But what makes Outlander Zicky Dice, it's not a who or a what, it's the why. It's everything that I've been through in my life, the trauma, the depression, the PTSD, the heartache, the, the loss. Like, I take that all and I, I get to – Outlander Zicky Dice is a completely different person than Nick Zappo. And that's what I love about it. I take, I, 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 you know, I went and pierced the ear. I started bleaching the hair and I got these natural curls that I hated my whole entire life. And now I'm finally embracing the curls and Oh baby, does it make me money, you know, and then just committing to the character, right? Doing things that a lot of other people wouldn't do because why? Because I still like to blur the lines. I still like to ruffle a little bit of feathers, like above along the way. I'm all about that. I like that old school style. You know, I like when they don't know where, Nick ends and Zicky begins. Um, and I do a lot of things that Nick wouldn't do to help get Zicky over. For example, when AEW had their all in pay-per-view and I was living in uh, California, I put a billboard that said all outlandish Zicky dice right outside the exit of the, of the spot. And I didn't say a word about it. I let social media do the thing. Would have a lot of other people have done that? No, probably not. But Hey, 
when so, scared money don't make money. Well, let me ask you this, Lars, because I know PD, and PD is exactly in and out of the ring, PD Williams. Lars, I don't know if I've ever asked you this, but do, is your on stage Lars persona like you off stage? Huh. <laughs> well, without the kids, I guess. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I've been this way for, you know, I don't know, four decades. <laughs> Yeah. It's not a, I live the gimmick, motherfuckers. Yep. Yep. So, well, my Zicky, Aunt Debbie said like this was a yeah. phase. And it, it, at 16 years old, I remember I was looking at some BAM's website and it said, Merry Christmas, motherfuckers. And my aunt like called my mom and was all worried about me, you know? <laughs> and she's like, it's, it's just a phase. But here we are. Here we are. Still making that funny money, baby. Yeah. Well, I want to know. So, the Zicky, the, it, you know, there's a lot in name, right? So, especially if it's catchy. And it, and sometimes it doesn't. Not, what's a Zicky? Where'd you get the nickname? Is it kind of so, Nick in uh, in your last name? Yes. So, uh, summer of two thousand seven. Uh, <laughs> my I had a lot of idiot friends. Okay, my name is Nick Zappo. So they would just mix up letters because they were dumbasses, and that and Zick came along. So they would start calling me Zick, and then um, that evolved into Zicky, just because people wanted a variation of the name, right? And so now everyone on the road was calling me Zicky. And we always, uh, always, uh, I always had a set of dice in my pocket because I would like to shoot threes. You know, you got some downtime in the green room, right? I'll roll a little bit of dice, you know, take a little bit of someone's per diem. What, at that time, we we're only making four bucks a day. Let me take it from you. So I was like, you know what? If I ever become a wrestler, it's going to be Zicky dice, Zicky dice. Still get a part of my name in there. And, uh, and that's how Zicky evolved. And it just kind of stuck. And people just kind of called me that forever. And then, like, there's a lot of times I'll meet someone else named Nick, right? So I just they'll just call me Zicky off the bat. And that's that's it. So it's definitely. A, sorry, go ahead, Pete. No, you, you could do follow. I was please. just gonna say it's a memorable name. Did we met before, haven't we? Yes, we we met at APW. Once. That's right. That's right. Yeah, because I, I remember, and I think we took a picture together, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yes. Yes, I remember. Okay. Yeah, so I was I was asking the I was telling these guys I, I said I'm pretty sure I met this guy before, and uh, so uh, I, for, I I lost my train of thought. Petey. Uh, well, so I, I want to go back to you, the NWA. I, you know, NWA yes. TNA was you know before Impact, all that kind of stuff. So uh, you, you went with NWA. So walk me through that. Like, how how did they contact you and be like, hey, you know. You're coming to work for us, or you guys negotiate or whatever. Then how did it all end? Like, why was this it is like one of my hey, favorite stories? Actually, right. um, it's kind of funny how I went down. I went and saw the Smashing Pumpkins in September for my birthday. Uh, it was a gift from my my boss, and he was like, "Here, I got these extra tickets. Go see Smashing Pumpkins." I was like, "Okay, cool." Gave me four tickets. Took a buddy. Took Levi Shapiro with me, Lars. Oh, took Levi! Me. Yes, took him and his lady with me. I said, "Let's go to the show." Right. That happens. I'm supposed to be in Florida on November 3rd for a booking. Uh, something happens with the booking and it falls through. And I had an open date and I knew that championship wrestling from Hollywood was running. So I text Johnny Yuma, who was working there at the time. I said, hey, dude, I said, hey, you got any room? I said, I know all the boys are writing down. I, I got the day off. He's like, come on down. I'll find something for you. I said, OK, I had been working. uh I started working for championship wrestling uh, from Hollywood when I lived in Chicago um, after training before moving back to California. Um, and then I moved back to California, started working there a little bit more. And in this time, it was about almost three years, believe it or not. I never had a promo, not once in the ring, not once backstage, not once on the curtain, nothing. But that day I showed up early, rode down with the guys and we were talking on that six hour drive about how, almost like this feeling I feel now, but it's worse how I feel stuck. And I, I, I know that something's close. I don't know what yada, yada, yada show up early. And Nick Bonanno, the ref over there is like, Hey, Zicky, uh, you're here early. You, you want to cut a promo? I said, sure. I said, maybe six words. It was very simple. Uh, I know it ended with outlandish, but it was like, if you don't know my name, I blah, 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 something outlandish. And all of a sudden I got called to the back and I walked around the corner there and Billy Corgan and Dave Logano were standing there. And uh, he's like, uh, Billy Corgan. And I said, oh, uh, Landis, Zicky Dice, Nick, nice to meet you. He's like, Dave Logano. He's like, what are you doing December 14th? And I sat there and I was like, this sounds familiar. I was like, oh, me and my fiance at the time, she's my wife now. I said, we just planned a snow trip. And I was like, oh, nothing. I'm completely free. He's like, well, how would you like to come <laughs> work for me in the NWA? And I said, I would love that. So 
I'll be honest with you. Levi saw the whole thing go down, Lars. He was like, motherfucker. Like, it, this, was, this was right in the back in front of everyone. Like, kind of everyone knew what the hell just kind of happened, right? Um, so uh, I show up to NWA, and I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Uh, was, I going, was I going to make someone look good? Uh, did I have an opportunity? I, I don't know. All I knew was Royce Isaacs, Dave Marquez, and one of the uh, producers, Billy Trask. That's it. I didn't, didn't know anyone else. Get to the Airbnb and uh, Ricky Starks in the room next to me. Never met him. And he was sleeping. I heard him making noise. And I'm an early bird. I always wake up early. So I told him to shut up. And he came in my room. He's like, did you just tell me to shut up? I was like, I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> and I was totally joking with him. And we became buddies right off the bat. So um, they invited me back for a second uh, taping. And that was that. And at that second taping is when they decided, Billy decided to uh, changed things up and wanted Ricky to chase me for the title. And I didn't find that out until the match before. And I was like, yo, what? And, uh, uh, I won the championship and I'll be honest. I, I took that, that belt and I went to the back and bawled my eyes out. It was a very proud moment for me. Um, and I mean, it's, we're talking the NWA world television championship here, you know, and to win that and, and everything that I've been through, I was like, let's go, you know, let's go. I remember FaceTime a few of my good friends and I just, uh, they knew I was there and they're like, what's up? And I just held the belts up and the thing, they're all, no, and it's like, yeah, you know, it's like, let's go. And, um, and I was very proud to, you know, get, I, cause I knew my hustle, right. I was ready to order uh, a pink strap for the title and get people pissed off. I was ready to bring the championship with me while uh, all the uh, indie bookings I was doing because I knew my hustle. Right. And I knew like, I, uh, I like to put um, effort into my production. As you can see, I like to, I, I don't want to give anyone a reason not not to book me not to want me right gotta lay it all out and uh and then COVID happened and that was that wow and and listen you had a very publicized uh split with the nwa and i'm sure we'll touch on that here in a few minutes COVID hits you split what's going through your mind because that's got to be a scary time for any wrestler to it begin. sucked yeah it sucked man um it, it really sucked but at the same time, when Twitch came about and when uh, I was still working a part time job on the side and uh, and, and grinding, you know, it's, it's been that way since I was 14, 15. And um, I'm, I'm thankful that it happened because I should have taken the risk on Zicky Dice a long time ago. Um, since March 8th of last year, this Zicky Dice has been my full time job. And, uh, you know, I was able to get married and move across country and and come to Atlanta so I can have a bigger creative space and, and be closer to the, the places I want to be and, and have more wrestling around me. And, uh, you know, I'm not afraid to, to take a risk. And here I am at 33 years old and I'm still gambling, still rolling hard because I have no, there is no plan B. This, this is it. Can I, can I jump in, Pete? I got one yeah. more follow-up question and You've talked about your love for wrestling here, and we see the production value you've put into your videos, and you're becoming this big Twitch streamer, 2 million views. We've heard that a few times on the show. But what happens if Ziggy Dice has to make a decision, wrestling or Twitch or wrestling or video production? It, it would be wrestling. It, it would be wrestling. I can't give that up, and I've, you know, I've had that thought, and uh, Starks has brought that up to me a, a few times. And, um, and we go back and forth and he's like, don't set yourself up mentally to fail. And I said, mm -hmm. he's all, because if that doesn't happen, you're, if it doesn't happen for you, you're going to be hurt. And I said, yes, <laughs> I said, yes, I said, yes, I am. And I said, that's why that's not an option for me. That's why I got to outshine everybody else. I got to be talked about everywhere. I have to be on everyone's feed because we live in a 15 second world. And I got to make sure that somebody somewhere is talking about Zicky Dice. So because I, there's going to come a point in time where they can't ignore that anymore. Uh, absolutely. So tell us just, uh, this is the most, I guess I'll use it. The most outlandish set I've ever seen on this show or probably ever. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I know everybody's like watching, they're wondering like, what's going on here? Like Q kind of bring us behind the curtain and, and tell sure. us the magic behind it and stuff like sure. that. And so we got a lot whistles. of, uh, yeah, we got a lot of 3d effects that pop up um, that we got integrated this usually makes a lot of noise with me yelling at everyone and this is all stuff we've learned in um 10 months it's my uh, my partner scooch and i and he's a buddy from back home he moved out to georgia and we he's a 
He um, does all the magic from taking photos, filming the promos, editing, uh, to doing creative with me. And we just spent all this time in here. We have just building these random sets and trying to make the, the like, just once again, trying to stand out on Twitch. And what we've done in 10 months on that platform is, is insane, you know? And I can't wait to see what happens in 10 more months. Um, but it's, and, and challenging ourselves. Like that video we released on Monday, to be honest with you, that was a, a project. We got this, uh, I got this treadmill for 50 bucks on the, the marketplace. And I, actually it was a funny story. I, I showed up to get it and the guy's like, are you sticky dice? And I was like, uh, <laughs> no. yes. He's like, my son wants to talk to you. And his son came out and was talking to me all about NWA and everything. I was all sick. I get, uh, gave him a little eight by 10, but we got this treadmill and he's like, oh, you, you build in a gym. I said, no, we're taking it apart. We're painting it green. So we took it apart, painted it green. And that video was, um, was shot in my garage. I've got a stand-up green screen over here, um, a green screen right behind me, a camera here. I just got a new camera for the stand-up set. I convinced my wife to let me take our 55 inch TV out of the room. And I got that upwards on a stand just for my chat. So I can always see what's going on with the little monitor for myself as well. Uh, I got two screens here. There's a desk here. I got one computer. My partner's got his computer. We got a mixer uh, plugged into 40 different things and two wireless mics. And it's not enough. Like I want a mocap suit. I want, I want, I want to just keep pushing the limits. You know, I'm, I really want to try My whole thing is like keeping the viewers on their toes um, and, and keeping them engaged because at the same time, this opportunity on Twitch is helping my brand grow and my character grow. And um, something I've learned, and I'm going to break it down to you. I learned this during quarantine. And, and I can't tell you who exactly told me this at this moment, but there is one day, I promise you, I will come back and I'll tell you who said it right here on this podcast. But I had gotten a phone call and I answered the phone and they said, Zicky Dice, I said, you are bigger than professional wrestling. And they said, I can't say that about many people. And uh, I've been rolling with that. So I break the character out. That's why in some of the sketches I'm trying to break down like, oh, let's not talk about wrestling references so much because we can get the character to connect with everybody else. And then you pull them into your wrestling character. Boom. And that's just all we've been doing. So I got it. Uh, sorry, guys. I got another one. Go for it. So uh, if people are watching right now, right? Like if you had to sell them on like, hey, this is if you tune into our Twitch channel, this is what you'd be in for. Like, what are the things you do? Like, what can they expect? Oh, man. <laughs> I, I literally, when I say we are a variety stream, the most, we had Lita come on the show and she got my chat all hyped and I ended up shaving my eyebrows off. I will never do that again. Yeah. Two months are finally growing back. But when you got Lita on the stream and a few thousand people hoot and holler and shave them, what are you going to do, dude? You gotta shave, gotta shave them. Yeah. I said something stupid. I said, hey, if we get a hundred gift subs, I'll shave the eyebrows. The chat's never done that. Lo and behold, they gifted a hundred subs and I had to shave my freaking eyebrows. You know, I smashed eggs on my head. I've taped myself to the chair. The <laughs> cops have shown up during hype trains. Hype trains is like when they're uh, throwing bits. It's like the currency and subscriptions. Things get all crazy. I've had police show up because I'm too loud. Uh, we take live calls. Last night we took live calls and we took secrets. And this dude was at Walmart. I was dying laughing. And I told him to pass the phone to a stranger and tell him that they were on a game show. And I asked the stranger some riddle. We just do dumb shit i promise you're gonna laugh we watch some wrestling uh wednesdays is our big show on twitch we do um zicky dice's outlandish paradise i bring on wrestling guests we chit chat about wrestling and kind of uh just shoot the shit a little bit very lax not really interview style we more take i mostly focus on the chat everything's like how do i get the chat involved with these guests you know it's i'm kind of making this connection that you're like the uh modern day you're like exotic adrian street 2.0 you're just using i love that you know, you're you just using like the internet. Do you, I mean, you that, know, I that's have what it kids. is. It's like, it's exactly what you just said, Lars. It's like a, a big celebrity, right? This, 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 uh, the star who's also a professional wrestler, right? That, well, that's exactly why I made the connection. I'm just seeing how you're, you're using the, the, the internet. That's like your, your boas and your, you know, flamboyant. Another thing that's helped me is I say like, the Sasha Baron Cohen theory, you know, with Borat, right? How did he get Borat over? He was Borat in public. So when you see Atlanta Zicky Dice at the airport, you're going to you're gonna look around and be like, who is that guy? Like, he's someone. I go, I got the pink fanny pack on, the crazy colored suits, you know, with the pink suitcase. It's all, it, like you said, living the gimmick, baby. This is it. Yeah. This is it. Because I, I want people to know, like, who is that? Or, like, 
if I was to just bring a, a pay a few people just to take fake photos of me in the airport, I bet you we could pull a mob together. We should do it. We should film it together. I guarantee that would work. Oh, that, that's know? that's a good you know? like. Uh, uh, what's that called when you you know you you do those things those I, I can't remember yeah. them but it's like Street human or yeah the, the little test you know yeah the test like, like in human yeah. like real life tests and stuff yeah that that would definitely work that's a great idea I'm stealing it you know Sorry. and no, yeah nothing sells more than mystery fellas that's yeah. why I like to keep everybody guessing on what's next and I don't know what's next I wish I had an answer for you because it stresses me out from time to time <laughs> we're being you? honest but. Do you stress your wife out? Because I, I I see you and I hear in the stories and I can only imagine her going out in public with you and you're Ziggy Dice and she's rolling her eyes. Because, you so, know, Nick, <laughs> pick out the trash. It, but I'm not. I'm Ziggy Dice. She's uh, very supportive. Uh, she's an accountant, so she's in tax season right now. And I get heat if I'm being too loud in here during some kind of hype episode. She's like, I'm in there. I just, I wish I could be a fly on the wall. just talking to her friends about me, you know, like, Oh, I'm in there doing taxes and he's smashing eggs on his head, you know, like 33 <laughs> years old, you know? Um, well, that's but, what you're fucking supposed to do when you're 33. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's I what mean, I'm saying. Whatever. The one thing I do feel bad about, and she's been a trooper on is the amount of people that come through the house. Um, <laughs> you know, we're always filming something or uh, creating or someone's coming over to this or, you know, it's so, Shout out to her. But the goal is one day to have a nice creative space. You know, I'd love to do, I've got some big plans in my head um, and I would like to have the space to be able to do that. You know, almost like a, a, mo a small movie studio, if you will, where I could stream or, or shit, throw a show if I wanted to, whatever. Okay. So on the creative side, when, you know, I know for me, when it comes to creativity, it, it comes at all different in, in all different ways. Mostly when I'm driving though, that's when I, when I start, I don't mm -hmm. know, for whatever reason, I can, can connect with the psychic telephone. Where do you find your inspiration? Does it happen at night? Like what, 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 like your Sometimes character development? It's, it's, I have to say late night. I have a, I wake up a few times throughout the night. I have trouble sleeping. It's hard for me to shut the brain down because I'm just constantly thinking, I'm like, oh, I've got to do this. I've got to do that. And I find most of them are at night. I, I made a point to have a pen near me at all times if my phone's not around, because if I think I'll remember something, I won't no matter how good the idea I've got uh, fellas, a big ass whiteboard behind me with a list of ideas on it. Um, and that that's it. And if I could give any advice to anybody watching right now is, you know, how, many, how much shit product I put out there. There's a lot, but I've learned and I haven't been afraid to keep putting out new, new pieces of content. I haven't been afraid. I've been afraid to try new things. A lot of people, you just, they're like, the one thing I hate hearing is, Oh, Zicky, you're so lucky. Dude, bullshit. Bullshit. I busted my ass. We spent mm -hmm. hours, dude, to, to put this one scene to get this, this new scene that we're working on to get a crystal ball to move. Uh, one two second movement takes hours to make. Hours, you know? Um, it, it, a lot of work goes into it. So uh, it's, not, uh, it's not luck by any means. Anybody can do it. You just have to be willing to just go and keep going. So and that's the thing. If these ideas come to mind. I'm just like, let's pick one and let's roll with it. Commit. So it seems like you have a lot of good ideas. You claim that you have a lot of bad ideas. In my mind, I don't ever think there's any, like no such thing as bad ideas. Maybe it's just things that don't get over to, you know, other, other people in their mind. But let, let's say fast forward, you know, you're done wrestling. You're, you're done with the in-ring part of it, not the business, but the in-ring part of it. Um, do you feel like you have that in that mind? Like, hey, I can, I can write wrestling from here on forward. I could develop characters do you see yourself doing anything behind the scenes when you're done I wrestling would, i would love to be like i i manage a few bands now because i you know doing the music thing i still want to be involved in music some way somehow right and i would like to do the same with wrestling um and i would like to i need to have some kind of creative outlet so i don't know what that looks like but the answer is I, i'd say yes definitely in some way shape or form have you ever done anything uh so far in wrestling like behind the scenes um, uh, no, not really. I, because to be honest, I'm still working to get to that next level. Right. So most of the time I'm, I'm just listening. I'm still, and a lot of times I don't know a lot of the people in the locker room. So, um, uh, nothing like what you see right here, right now. I just, um, pay attention. You know, I listen and, uh, and I, I take, I take this brand very serious. You know, um, I, I, I see how a simple tweet or something you say in a video can quickly end everything. 
Um, and I, uh, I take that into mind. I like to, I like to ride the, the fine line of, uh, terms of service, but, uh, um, <laughs> you know, I can't help that. But. Wow. Uh, now let's get back to some character development questions. Cause we are at least a lot of us on this podcast are very high on the evolution of a character right now. I, I think you're at the, the middle of the mountain on your way up at the top with the Ziggy dice character. And you seem like a guy that puts a lot of thought into it. Do you have a elevate ele? Oh gosh, I'm, I'm blanking mm-hmm. on the word. No, the evolution of the Ziggy Dice character in your mind on how you want to take him from outlandish to maybe businessman Ziggy Dice. You know this Ziggy Dice. You know that's a good question. And what I would like to see is, I feel that the character has still been in the nest. I haven't had a chance to spread my wings yet and fly. And I think that's when we'll be able to know what, what comes next, you know? Do do I wait for Ricky to keep killing it a little bit? Maybe I show up and attack his ass again. Yeah, I, I don't know. Who knows? Well, you did bring up uh, Ricky, and I do want to touch on your NWA days, which, you know, we don't want to get too much into it. It, would, it. it seems like it was a little bit of a nasty breakup. Would you say that bridge has been torched, burnt to the ground? I mean, just destroyed nuked maybe yes Uh, yes (laughs) yes i would say that and let's be honest here there's a lot of game of and that's because you play the game of telephone right he said she said dirt cheats are getting involved with complete lies i'm going to tell you this right now i had no heat with there was i didn't have heat with anybody in the locker room except for one person you know and I'm pretty sure I know where that information came from in the dirt cheese. And there's a lot of things that I wanted to speak up about. Like I said earlier, I was very proud to have been there, right? I was very, uh, I, I, that was the next stage of my, of my career. And, but at the same time, uh, I knew that that was for me, that that was supposed to be my lily pad to help launch me to the next part of my career as well. It wasn't a permanent stay. Um, and, and I'm not being that disrespectful. I wasn't, I don't mean it's like a hit and run, like win the championship and leave. Like I did. That's not what, what I'm saying by any means, but, um, there was just a few things that I wish happened, uh, differently. And, uh, and that's that there's no hard feelings on my end. What's done is done. And, uh, I respect the NWA and everyone running, running it. And, um, it's just, as they say, it is what it is. Um, I am, am prepared to move on and I'm, ready for bigger all right so the, the bigger let, let, let's talk about bigger. that obviously you wednesday have wednesday nights i deserve to be on television wednesday nights every wednesday night monday tuesday wednesday yes bigger twice on tuesdays what action, action <laughs> figures action figures think about the ziggy dice action figures we can sell to the kids i'll break you guys into cut well, I know a place where you can work, but uh, anyways, I, I, I digress. Um, so obviously, you keep how, bringing up AEW. For you. What's that? How's Tuesdays for you? Yeah, how, how is Tuesdays? <laughs> and, uh, you know, Saturdays once a month, maybe some yeah, app specials. I, I hear, I hear. Um, Sex Ferguson tells me a lot about it. <laughs> um, so obviously, you know, from everything you've been saying for the past, you know, half hour, 40 minutes, you know, it, you got your sight set on AEW. Okay. Like, yes. I mean, that, yes. you're Spoiler. all in with them. It seems like, <laughs> you know, so, I'm, I'm, I'm open. I'm open. Okay. I'll I, I be know. honest. Yeah. What I see, what I love about it. Right. It's not that I have, I have friends there. I love that. It's still, an, uh, it's, it's still new. And what I see is the asset I can be to a new company and how I can ha- help it grow over the years and be able to say like, Hey, in 15 years, boom, this is what we were able to accomplish. That's what I, that's what I look forward to. And still being able to a work with my friends, have that lax schedule and be able to, to create on the side, do the Twitch thing, help with the videos on the side, do whatever, you know, um, I, am I open to the main stage? Uh, uh, what, uh, when I say that, like I'm talking the, the other one going up North. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. All right. It all depends. So, not, well, that's that's an interesting thing that you just said because I don't really see the North as the main stage anymore. No, I think that's. I, I, I think when so, I said that, me, I kind of put let the bitter taste. You know what I'm saying? It's right, like, right, right. Well, my, my I guess my question is is like, and I want to talk to you. Maybe this is a question for both of you guys. Um, but I mean, how do these how do the wrestlers view that place now? I mean, is it still like? I mean, because I know if you're a soccer player. You want to be in the EPL. If you're a baseball mm-hmm. player, you want to be in the in, in the Major League Baseball. If you're a pro football player, you don't want to go play freaking in Canada. 
You want to play in the NFL, right? Or the basketball, same thing, right? So, and of course, professional wrestling for many years was the WWF slash WWE. That was the, the big leagues, at least for a couple of decades. Now it's, I think personally, as a wrestling fan for 40 freaking years, it's not the major leagues anymore. I think AEW is just as good I as agree. an impact. I don't think it, impact so is many, like a, a step. So many stone. options now, you know, you got, you got new Japan, you got your ring of honor, you got impact. There's a lot of places to work. Um, it, it, and that's the thing. Why? I, I don't know. It just feels, I don't know. It, to me, it just feels right for me in, in my mind. And I, I've, I've gone back and forth in this many times. You can ask Levi the conversations I have, like, what if this happens? What if that happens? Oh, I get an email from this person or this happens. It's like, it's almost like a mental tug of war, you know, and, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm over it. I'm over it. So I guess right here, right now, that, that is my answer. So Zicky, the way I, I view you, your character and all that kind of stuff, where it would fit in best, um, you know, I don't, unless WWE like gave you the creative control, which I don't see them doing. Um, I, I don't think that's the place for you. I, I just don't like that. They, I agree. you know, we have friends there and, you know, everywhere and work there, all that kind of stuff. The way I, I view you is kind of like, you know, something that's not WWE, right? Hypothetically, you go to WWE right? Like just say, you know, you sign tomorrow or whatever. And then you're like, okay, I'm done here. And you, you've been there six months a year, whatever it is. All of a sudden you just elevated yourself. And then after that, everybody's going to be knocking on your door. That's how I think people and other wrestlers and wrestling companies view WWE. It's not like it's the be all end all, but Hey, if that guy's, mm -hmm. you know, made it up there, then he could go anywhere. That's the way I view it. So mm -hmm. where this is going to segue into my question right here. You, you talk about you're looking for mega stardom. All right. Not necessarily WWE or, or whatever, but mega stardom. So what does that look like to you? Is that, I don't know, like uh, holding the AEW championship. Is that going, you know, working for both AEW and impact doing that forbidden door? Is it W I think what's your goals? Like there? All of that, baby. I think it looks like, like I said earlier, hosting a surprise game show. Maybe, uh, you know, they bring me on a uh, good morning America and I'm laughing, <laughs> doing all of that. The paparazzi. No, please. No. Have, having to, having to, you know, forcefully close my, my big old pink car doors. And that's what it looks like to me. It looks like taking the ceiling off of professional wrestling and letting the Zicky Dice name branch out to everything. I'm talking cartoons. I'm talking to late night television. I'm talking to giving back because Zicky Dice does want to give back. And one of my plans is to do a, an all wrestling event for those with uh, special needs only. That's it. Um, and uh, those are my goals. That's what I want to be able to do is, is, is give back and, and make people laugh along the way, right? I'm an emotional salesman. That's what I sell as emotion. I've done it with music. I, I, I do it with wrestling. And I'm doing that here right now. And that's what I continue to do is make sure people haven't felt as low as I have at certain points of the time in my life. And how do I do that? Making them feel something else. This, this might be one of these questions where you go back to this interview five years later and you go, oh man, yeah, that was a good question. But we, we do a lot of interviews with guys who are already established and we're watching you climb that mountain. You are, you know, months, year away from breaking it big. How frustrating is it? I mean, being, yeah. being yeah. at the door, knocking on it and, and waiting for someone to answer, knowing that you have the goods, you have the look, you have the skill, but no one's answering. Dude, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. It, it, it drives me nuts. In all reality, all bullshit aside, all outlandish, ha, 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 out the window right now, it drives me fucking nuts, dude. Nuts. I call Ricky, and I'm like, dude, what is it? You know, and, and it's funny because Ricky, when he turned down his NWA contract, he felt the exact way that I am right now. But my thing is, every day that goes on, it gets worse for me, right? Release this hot video. It's like, dude, what do I have to do next? My next video has to be better than this 67-second video we released on Monday. And that took us three weeks. It's just myself and my partner, Scooge, pumping out all this content. You know, it's a, I, I know it's a promo away. It's something away. And it's like, dude, I, I go and do extra work at WWE. And Jeff Jarrett comes up to me and grabs my fanny pack. He's like, you're a star, kid. You know, and, and right. we get a, Levi and I get a standing ovation in the ring um, uh, around the tryout match. And we never give anyone standing ovations. And you know what I did? I did three magic tricks and took one bump in that ring. You know, that's it. I make sure to stand out. Okay. I, I make sure to do things different. I know, I, I know they, they see the tags. I see the daily tags and I'm sick of them. I'm sick of the, why don't you go here? Why don't you go there? Like it's up to me. 
-hmm. Like I have some kind of control. I'll tell you this. I won't slow down and I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. Find find me someone doing on the indie circuit or, or, or someone who you claim is more deserving and give me 48 hours and I'll outshine them every single time, dude. Love it. My ring gear, top notch. The other day I was so depressed about being stuck where I am on the, uh, working on this video. You know what I did? I ordered brand new custom pink boots with white soles, brand new set of gear, four new ring jackets ready. You know what else? I got some more dress shoes because when the call comes, I got the suit ready to go. Hair bleached. The hair stays bleached every three weeks. I'm not going to let those roots grow in and go on television. Look like a sack of shit. <laughs> added, added DDP <laughs> yoga into the mix. Um, I met Dallas for the first time the other day. I was sitting there. Uh, this is a funny story in the mix. I was sitting there and I was like, Hey, nice to meet you. And he's like, yeah. And then they were like filming something on stage. And I told my buddy, I was like, dude, am I supposed to be here? And he's like, he's like, yeah, it's cool. I was like, but it's one of those friends, you know, that always says everything's cool. So I'm like, dude, I don't know if this is really cool, dude. Like, you know, they're filming something. And I'm sitting there down on the phone. And I hear young me, young me, young me. And I'm like, look at it. And uh, my buddy goes, Zicky. And I go, and Dallas all, you want to come up and do this workout on the stage? Dude, it's my third weekend. They're all doing it perfect. I'm shaking on the stage on this like live video. Like, like hold it, you know? And just like, oh, Jesus Christ. Like right next to Dallas. That was my, that was my Monday. Yeah. Wow. But young me, I'll take a young Dallas all day. I'll take an Adrian Street all day. Jeez. Okay, I guess you, I'm sorry, Dan. I was gonna say we got time for one more piece, uh, Dolores. Well, it's mostly I, I, I'm kind of curious because I have a feeling where you know, okay, so I'm not trying to like uh, be your manager right now, but I don't, you know, I see you in in a company that I see. I'm curious to hear what you, you, Dennis and Petey think, where do you think this guy should go? Cause I think that where you would shine the most and stand out the most and make the biggest pop and be the brightest sun that you could be is an impact. I think it's that, I that, hear that. that promotion I think is, is made for you because I of your, 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 your gimmick, your character. And I think that you would have that creative freedom. I, I, it's just a comment. That's all I really have. I've really thoroughly enjoyed getting to know you better, Ziggy. So thank you very much thank for you. your time tonight. No, thank you for having me. And this has been great. And I like that I can actually talk about my frustrations because like you said, it is very frustrating for me. It's very tough, you know, like, uh, and here's my thing is, you know, I, I have this weird mental block that I feel like 33 is old, right? Like that I'm like, you know, I, fuck I, know off. I, I know, I know, I know, right? But like, you know, if I, game, if I like, was there right now, I would fucking change that fucking little background that you got there to some like, no, to some hardcore. I, 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 I would chain you up and just start whipping you and go, boy, <laughs> you ain't 50 yet. It's not a mental block. That's what they tell you in the wrestling business. Yeah, that 33 is old. They, so it, it gets in your head. I get where I see where you're coming from. But you know, that, that but, is not old by any means, not for what you're doing. Absolutely not. You know, but you just see everyone going, uh, get, uh, you know, like you got your Chris Bay, dude's a star, right? Dude's yeah. young as shit. You know, and these guys that have, like, that are on TV now. And with me being on my age, it's like, I worry that I still have, I, like I said, I still have to let those wings open up. I still got to leave the nest. And I haven't had time to get my character over, not even at NWA. I haven't had time to really do anything. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and just having someone behind me that believes uh in this as much as i do and and what i'm willing to do um for that i I think you know i i think this is how i explain it maybe i should go on craigslist when i'm done and just go on misconnections because that's what i feel like it is i feel like we just haven't met yet hey i saw you from afar you know (laughs) you were wearing a blue shirt at the albertsons (laughs) oh my god I, I so I just had to comment on this since Lars brought it up. So I, I think you'd be able to personally succeed in a, any of the companies that we just talked about, even like a Ring of Honor, who's like you know For really sure. focusing on the pure wrestling right now. You you would add something different, even in WWE. I think you could d- succeed in WWE if they're gonna hire you. They're gonna hire Zicky Dice, the out- outlandish, and they're gonna hire it because you're you. They're not gonna try to change your gimmick. That's that's I I believe that's old WWE. I, so, I agree. I agree with with that. And with, with what you're saying in the meantime, all I can do is keep doing what I'm doing because each day that Ziggy Dice stock gets worth a little more, believe it or not, you know, and I have, I'll have more to bargain and uh, bring to the table. And uh, when that time comes. 
I, I disagree about the WWE thing because here's how I'll exactly... I wasn't done yet, but okay. Uh, I'm just gonna... <laughs> and I apologize, Petey Williams. Here, here... Yeah, me too. Now I feel bad too. Good Way to fuck up everything. Way to fuck up everything, Zicky. Yeah. <laughs> here's why I don't think you would succeed in WWE. And it's not you, but I think it would be the frustration where you would want to do a YouTube show or a Twitch show or something mm -hmm. for them. And they wouldn't want to give it to you, and then you're it, it'll it'll become frustrating because they're just like focus on your six minutes in the ring, and that's all we want out of you. Uh, maybe we'll let you do a WWE YouTube exclusive promo for thirty two seconds. Have a good day. And I don't think that's enough for you. Listening to you talk, and it's not a bad thing, but you are a guy that wants more, wants to push it, and wants to be a face somewhere. And mm -hmm. I think the Ziggy Dice on and off the screen will succeed better as a big fish in a smaller pond opposed to the giant up north ocean. Yeah, I mean, you know, you think about the Ramones and that's all Rance had ever wanted to be. It's like if we could go into any club and put a thousand asses in that place and do that for 25 years, we'd be stoked. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously a lot more than that happened, but it's like, there's nothing wrong with the Ramones, right? And that's kind of the way I see impact. That's kind of the way I see, you know, a, the, the, those, these other promotions, you know? I feel like the stepping stone now is the WWE. I mean, how many of these people come there and then get, you know, 6 million followers on Instagram and then split and you never hear about them again? No, so that, that and that's similar to what, uh, you know, Dennis and Lars were saying um, the WWE, you know, they, they would, I feel like just, you know, just going off their, their history and their track record, they would focus on your character. They, they would push you. They would make sure you got over and stuff like that. And then after that, like Dennis said, I think you'd be like, Oh, this guy's over. They'd probably turn you into a comedy character, all that kind of, you, you know how it goes, right? That, yeah, that's writer. another thing too. You, you say that. And that's, that's another reason why I want to release this video on this Monday. It's because we've got funny down. I do a lot of funny on Twitch. I, we, I, I can release sketch comedy and funny bits all day, but I want to show there's many sides to, to a die. Some six, some, there's even a 20 sided die, even a hundred sided die. So let's show them all sides of Ziggy Dice. What, and when they I haven't seen that yet. When I think of the Ziggy Dice WWE comparison, I go right to Zack Ryder. Look what he was doing with his YouTube show. He was, he was the first guy to do it. His, uh, what was it, the Long Island uh, YouTube show that he was putting on. Him and the fans got himself over in the WWE. Then he got to a certain point on WWE. I believe they gave him the Intercontinental Champion. Then they shut it all down. He was left holding nothing. And at the end of the day, they didn't do anything with him. And that's the best comparison I think I could see with a Ziggy Dice going to the E. I think you stumbled on a cool skit though, like because you could be like Zicky Dice D and D version with your twenty sided die out yeah, there. And yeah, your, yeah. And your man, <laughs> so, your like man twenty of... different versions of me, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like a fun house. Hell yeah, yeah, be sick. <laughs> All right, listen, guys, for everybody at home, the show's about to end. For us, we're gonna say our goodbyes off the air. Ziggy, where can people find you? Hey, I made that nice and easy. You can catch me live five to six days a week at twitch.tv slash Zicky Dice and at Zicky Dice on every piece of social media out there. That's sweet like butter. Why can't you do that, Pete? I I, I, I try, man. I need to take after Zicky, I guess. I know, right? <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta give you a new name, something that no one's ever heard before. Jork. J-O-R-K. Jork, J -O -R -K. Yes. Jork Jor Williams. Yes. <laughs> the Nordic. I think I think Dicky. Dicky, you look like a Dicky. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, we can ask Peter, so I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. all right, <laughs> Lars, where can people find you? And then, and then you could be like, then you could do the Dicky Destroyer. Dicky Destroyer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, where can people I, find you, Lars? I don't want anybody to fucking find me, okay, bro. I'm having a bad <laughs> night. All right, <laughs> it, it's, it's the wrestling perspective, guys. Find us everywhere you want. Thank you so much for watching here on Fight TV, guys. Have a good night, and we'll talk to everybody later.